Google just announced the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro. And while they didn't tell us everything about the phones, they did show us what the phones will look like. They revealed a little bit about what is likely to be the most significant Pixel camera upgrade in years. And most importantly, they confirmed that the chipset that will be powering it all is actually not one from Qualcomm. And instead, for the first time, Google is using their very own SoC. Now, first, let's talk about that all new design. I like that Google is just embracing the camera hump or what they're calling a camera bar that goes all the way across the entire back. Not only does this give the Pixel a truly unique look, it also comes with the benefit of the phone not rocking from side to side when you're using it when it's lying flat on a table. In terms of the body, Google is bringing back that two-tone look that the original Pixels had, with the colors on the top of the camera bar being slightly different from the colors underneath it. Unlike last year, the back of the phones are using glass with matte or polished aluminum frames depending on the model that you get, and as you may have noticed, there is no fingerprint sensor on the back of these phones, with Google instead going with an in-screen fingerprint sensor this year, which is a first for the Pixel line. Now, speaking of the screens, the Pixel 6 is getting a completely flat 90Hz 6.4 inch display with a full HD resolution, while the Pixel 6 Pro gets a slightly curved 120Hz screen that's 6.7 inches and has a quad HD resolution. And from the looks of it, the Pro version also seems to have thinner bezels. Oh, and one thing worth mentioning here is it looks like Google is using an actual earpiece slot this time instead of the under display earpiece that the Pixel 5 had, which is music to my ears since that underscreen speaker on the Pixel 5 just sounded bad. Overall, I really like the look of them. They still look very much like Google phones, but they finally have that high-end polish that previous Pixel phones were lacking. Okay, now on to the cameras. The Pixel 6 looks like it's gonna have the biggest camera improvement in years. Part of that has to do with the new SoC, which we'll talk about in a bit. But in terms of the camera hardware itself, the Pixel 6 is gonna be the first Pixel phone to get a new sensor in in close to four years. While Google didn't give us the exact megapixel count or the sensor size on the new camera, they did at least tell us that the new sensor will bring in 150% more light. Now, there are some differences between the two models, unlike in the past. The smaller, regular Pixel 6 gets an ultra-wide camera and a new main sensor, while the Pixel 6 Pro gets those same two cameras along with a 4X telephoto lens. Now that's pretty much all Google told us about the camera hardware, but this is Google we're talking about. You know there's gonna be a bunch of AI stuff that's happening behind the scenes that make the camera stand out, and this year, a big part of that has to do with the all new chipset. So unlike previous Pixel phones, or really any Android phone sold in the US, the Pixel 6 isn't gonna be using a Snapdragon chip from Qualcomm. And instead, for the first time, Google is using their own in-house chipset called the Tensor SoC. Google says they've been working working on this chip for the last four years, and what this means is just like Apple, Google is finally gonna have full control on both the software and the hardware on their phones. Now, in terms of the Google chip's performance, well, all Google is telling us for now is that it'll be highly competitive for the normal stuff that people look for, so like the GPU and the CPU. But really, the emphasis for Google was the chip's TPU, or Tensor Processing Unit, that's gonna be responsible for all that AI stuff that Google does behind the scenes. What this means for the cameras is all that computational photography that allowed the Pixel phones to capture some of the best looking photos on any smartphone can be done for videos. So every frame in a video recording will get that HDR treatment, and at least according to a video sample that Google showed to The Verge, the Pixel 6's video quality looked better than the quality of the iPhone 12 Pro Max's, which at least in my opinion has the best video quality on any smartphone right now. Obviously, this was a hand-picked demo that Google decided to show to The Verge, so you kind of expected it to look better, but still, given that the Pixel's video quality was kind of the weak point of the camera system, this is a really good sign. Another example that Google gave where the TPU helps improve the camera performance was in a shot where a kid was moving around and the image came out blurry since that's typically what happens and without the TPU it was just a blurry photo but with the TPU the Pixel 6 had the bandwidth to also capture a super fast and in focus shot using the phone's ultra wide camera and then combine that image data with the main sensor's image to create a new and in focus photo but look Google's made promises on the camera before if you remember the whole removing a fence from an image thing that never came to fruition so we'll have to wait and hold out any opinions until we actually test the phones but I've got to say they've got 
me kind of excited. Now, in addition to helping the camera performance, the TPU will also be used for things like translating text locally without an internet connection, voice dictation will be faster with the ability to edit text with the keyboard while you're dictating, and I imagine Google will have a few AI tricks with the Google Assistant up their sleeve when they release the phones later this fall. In terms of pricing, don't expect the typical mid-range pixel prices from the past. Google's made it clear that they're competing at the ultra high end this time, which means that more than likely, these phones are going to sell for north of $1,000. And to be honest, I'm okay with that. We've never seen a $1,000 plus smartphone from Google. Usually that's where Apple and Samsung competes. So having another big player like Google enter the mix is going to make the smartphone landscape later this year really interesting.